What's up guys? So I'm going to be continuing my videos of checking out custom kernels on the Nexus 4 and this one's going to be the Trinity kernel. Now I have flashed the latest Trinity kernel and I've also coupled it with the Trinity toolbox over here which is a paid app. I'll put it in the description and before I actually go into the app I just want to say the custom kernel itself actually has its own colors built into the kernel so as soon as you flash it you will have different colors on your display and I've got to say I really like them. You know they're a lot more saturated, they're a lot more bluey, I kind of like a colder screen. I like my whites to be really white, and they are on this. I mean, I don't know how well they'll come through on the camera, but the whites are fantastically white, and it's really nice. Now, if you don't actually like the colors, the good thing about the toolbox is, if I go out of this quickly, you can see that with the uh, latest kernel, you can actually change the settings. You, you've got your RGB values here, and if you want more detailed color settings, you've got them here. And you can see blacks, grays, mids, whites, brightness, contrast, and saturation. And I've got to say I prefer this way than the uh, Fox display because the Fox display I think gives you more control over it. You've got more settings, but it's a lot more complicated. You know, I don't know what the hell grayscales do, but at least this one I know that I'm changing the blacks, grays, mids, whites. You know, brightness, contrast, and saturation. I know what I'm changing. You can just go in here and change the number. Um, you can get loads of settings from the threads. The same settings will work from Franco's kernel as well if you've got that. So yeah, let's uh, move over. We'll start in the CPU tab. So once you flash this, you'll see this is pretty much what it starts off at. Uh, you flash it and the minimum is 384. The maximum is actually 1458. At stock, you can actually slide this up and you'll hit the uh, normal 512 as a max. And it will overclock all the way up to 1.86. Now, I don't want to overclock to 1.86, so I'm going to leave it. I'll, in fact, I'll leave it on the default 1512, which is default for uh, the Nexus 4, not the actual kernel. And you can change the governors here. You can see interactive, conservative, user space, power save, and the I.O. schedulers as well. I'm leaving it on row. So the app itself doesn't have as many options as Fox Clock. Fox Clock lets you turn off MP decision, let you have an eco mode and stuff like that. Now, I know that the uh, actual kernel, the actual Trinity kernel itself doesn't have MP decision and it has its own thermal stuff. So MP decision isn't on, which means you are going to save battery life anyway, but you don't have the option to turn it on or off like you did on Fox Clock, but never mind. Let's move over to voltages. Now, it's already underclocked by default. I didn't actually do anything here, and I must, I'm must. i I'm pretty happy with the, uh, the undervolt. Did I say underclock? I meant undervolt. And um, you can actually undervolt it further than you could on uh, Fox Clock, which I like. These, va these values down here, 384, 486, and 594, were all capped at 800 and you couldn't go lower on Fox Clock. Here you can see you can go lower. They've actually gone to 750 on two of them. And it's been rock solid for me. I've done benchmarking and there's no problems with it whatsoever. So that's good. If you go over here to the turnables tab, this is where you can actually change stuff. You can see vibration strength, pulse width, all this stuff. You've got the uh, color adjustments here. I changed my read ahead to 2048. I think it was down here somewhere in the thousands. I changed it all the way up to the top and I haven't had any problems with that. You've also got USB fast charge. The Force non-boot CPUs doesn't work with the Nexus 4 at the moment, so the actual setting does nothing. F-Sync, you've got F-Sync as well. If you turn it off, um, you will get better benchmarks, but if the phone crashes and it's off, you will have to reflash your ROM. I've done it before and it, you know, it messed up my phone. I had to reflash the ROM. So I'm going to leave it on safer. You've also got a dare kernel tab here, which actually gives you the um, kernels. This is the one I flashed here, the, the latest version, T97. So you can see that the actual kernel gives you more in the terms of overclocking. You can overclock it further. The uh, Fox kernel didn't allow any overclocks. There are no overclocks for the GPU. And that's about it, guys. You can see lower voltages, nice color control as well. Now, I just want to mention before I do some benchmarking, even at its uh, stock setting, which is lower than the stock frequency for the Nexus 4 in general, the 4858, which is what it boots at, this kernel seems smoother to me than Fox's. And if I just go around it, you'll see it just feels a little bit faster to me. I don't know if it's just me being subjective or what, but it definitely does feel a little bit faster. Whoops, that needed a, a thing there. It seems a bit smoother. I don't even know how that opened. It seems a bit smoother, but it definitely seems a little bit nicer than uh, Fox's kernel in terms of performance. So that is something to note. You can see everything opens really snappy, really nice, really well done. 
And because the lower the voltage is, again, the temperature is good. It's at 22.2, and I've been playing with it for a while, testing out the kernel, doing benchmarks, and the highest it actually got was 25. So I am quite impressed with that. Um, just open another app here. You can see how smooth it opens. It's it's really nice. There's no there's no problems with it whatsoever. I do think it's a better performing kernel in terms of performance than Fox. And yeah, let's let's uh, head over to some benchmarks here. So I'm going to start off. I am doing this on stock ROM as well. So just uh, take that into account. And before I do that benchmark, I'll actually put this back up to the stock values one five one two. Go ahead and open Quadrant run the benchmark, see how it performs. So what I've noticed about Trinity and Fox at the moment is Fox probably gives you more options in his app, like Eco Mode and Snake Charmer and stuff like that. Um, Trinity doesn't really give you the options to turn it on or off, but it is kind of already going on in the background, so you don't have to worry about it if that's uh, easy for you. I don't know how it's gonna turn out in battery life. I'll be doing my tests over the next few days and I'll make another video. But performance does seem a little bit better to me than Fox's kernel. Come on, Quadrant. Now, we know Quadrant kind of sucks anyway, so I'm not basing my whole my judgment of performance on Quadrant because it sucks, right? It's just not good. And I haven't changed my ROM, so, you know, Quadrant really gets affected by ROM, so... Let's uh, send this in. And we can see we score 5,088. So it is the top device. It's not the best score. I've seen devices hit 6, 7,000. You know, I've seen the Nexus 4 hit 6 or 7,000 if you've got the right custom ROM. So that just shows you that Quadrant can be manipulated quite easily. But nonetheless, it is top with 5,088, which is better than it did at stock, even though I'm running stock frequencies. The last one I will run which is probably a better test, is Antutu, which is apparently forced closed, but there we go. And that's actually the score I got last time, 18254. I'm going to run again just so you can see it. Um, this is kind of a long one, so I will just skip to the end. Okay, guys, and we're done with the result, and you can see it scored 18208, so again, a, a good score. Better than I was getting on stock. I think at stock, the maximum I got was about 17.5, so... I mean, I am still on stock ROM here, and that's a good score just from the kernel. It's not overclocked at all. It's using the stock Nexus 4 frequencies, so that's pretty good. We'll check it out in the chart. Uh, we'll look at the look at the uh, bar chart here. You can see it scores above where the LG Nexus 4 is, still below the uh, LG Optimus G. Saying that, I have seen the Nexus 4 score 22,000 just with, again, the right ROM with the right optimizations. So that's still a pretty damn good performance in terms of and 22 and a good result. So yeah, this uh, kernel does well in terms of benchmarks. I don't know how well it's going to do in terms of battery life. I'll do my tests and I'll make another video in a few days. So yeah, see you guys later.